Hello everyone, welcome to class of satellite and radar systems. This is unit 4 and lecture 2 and we are talking about radar systems. So these are the contents of today's lecture. We'll be talking about basic form of radar, how a radar operates, then various types of radar and finally we'll talk in detail about pulse radar. This is the very basic form of radar system block diagram. For radar communication, we do need a transmitter section that will be transmitting the electromagnetic waves that has to be transmitted via an antenna which is used to detect or locate a target in the territory. Here the role of this duplexer will be to enable the transmitting part at once and receiver in another point of time. Right? So transmitter has the complete system control. And receiver, once the electromagnetic waves are received, that has to be analyzed, that will be uh, used to generate information regarding the detection or location of the object. For that, we are using techniques like signal processing. We do need a decision making circuit here. The data processor and memory elements are integral part of this communication system. And finally, the location uh, can be displayed using a display unit. So we do have the, uh, various kind of display units as well. Here the transmitter generates the high power signal which is radiated by an antenna and this high power signals are usually my electromagnetic waves. Right? And since an antenna acts as a transducer here to couple electromagnetic energy from the transmission line to radiate in the space. We know that antenna is a coupling device that will be receiving energy and will be radiating into wireless medium, right? So these electromagnetic energies will be radiated with the help of antenna. Here the duplexer as the role already dis discussed, it permits alternate transmission and reception. First wave, electromagnetic wave is transmitted and whenever it is receiving the waves, the reception mode is enabled and that is accomplished with the help of a duplexer. In effect, it is a fast acting switch. So here the duplexer could be called as a switch that protects the sensitive receiver from high power of transmission, right? Now the receiver is capable of selecting and amplifying radar echoes. The received back signal is called as echo. The wave which is transmitted and detects the enemy object, what is reflected back is called as echo echo signal the received back signal here the signal processor separates the signal from the background noise which could be called as clutter here so clutter is a very famous term whenever we talk about radar communication this basically indicates my noise then on the basis of the echoes exceeding a predetermined value, a human operator or digital computer circuit decides whether a target is present or not. The first role of radar communication is to detect. As we know, as the name suggests, radar, radio detection and ranging. First of all, an object has to be detected. Later on, the range can be calculated. That is distinct of that object from the transmitting station. Once it has been decided that a target is present it, and its location, that is range and angle, has been determined, the track of the target can be obtained by measuring the target location at different times. Various techniques can, could be used here based on what kind of signal we are transmitting, whether we are transmitting pulse waves or we are transmitting continuous waves. And using various technology like uh, various principles like Doppler shift and all, we can actually track our target. So if I talk about components, various components of a complete radar system, what kind of antenna is basically used? Parabolic reflectors are most famous ones, whereas dipole antennas are also used in case of radar communication. So parabolic reflectors are 
the famous ones. If I talk about what kind of, uh, what phenomena it uses, yes, Doppler frequency shift plays an important role because the target most of the time, if it is moving, its future location could also be calculated by observing the echo that uh, whether the echo is uh, received in what time and how it is affected after striking back my target, right? If I talk about what element is used for generation of electromagnetic waves in case of my radar communication, klystron amplifiers are the most famous one. Why they are being uh, mostly used? Because they do have the highest power levels. Hence, they are mostly preferred in radar communication. Although apart from it, we may use traveling wave tubes. They do have good bandwidth of operation. We can use them in wider bandwidths. And if I talk about solid state transistors, they have fast switching. Another thing is they have good lifespan, right? So these are used preferably in case of radar communication. And if I talk about receivers, the radar receiver is a classical super heterodyne receiver. Heterodyne here means mixing of the signal. A basic super heterodyne receiver consists of low noise amplifiers, a pre-selector, a mixer, then IF uh, uh, intermediate frequency, uh, uh, IF amplifiers, uh, number of bandpass filters, and finally the demodulator. So what a basic super heterodyne consists of, my radar receiver also is similar. Now let's talk about what kind of, after, after, after talking about how radar operates, what are the various characteristics uh, of the components, let's talk about what are the various kinds of radar which we use commonly. We have primary radar and secondary radar. Primary radar, they are used for transmission of electric, electromagnetic waves and they do receive signal and hence they can be used for detection or ranging. Whereas secondary radar, they are just used uh, uh, in detection of friend or foe, right? They, 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 they don't do the complete task of transmitting and receiving. They are simply receivers, right? So the most studied uh, kind of radars are my primary radar. So primary radar can further be classified as pulse radar and continuous wave radar. This classification is based on what kind of signal is transmitted by my radar transmitter. If we are transmitting pulse train, high frequency train of rectangular pulses, then that kind of radar is my pulse radar. And if we go with basic sinusoid that is transmitted in air, that is called as continuous wave radar. Now my continuous wave radar can further be classified into unmodulated and modulated type. Let's see each one of it in detail. Primary radar is the system where the ground-based antenna transmits a radar pulse, then listens for small amount of return energy that is reflected. So it's a kind of active radar. And if I talk about secondary radar, this is a kind of passive radar. Here, the time delay between the transmission of the pulses and re reception of the reflected echo can be used to me measure the range, which was discussed in the previous lecture. As my electromagnetic wave travels with the velocity of light, the total time of travel, that will be the round trip time, once known and velocity is known, distance can easily be calculated, right? As distance equals to velocity into time, right? Here the velocity will be speed of light and time elapsed will be the round trip time. The time at which signal was transmitted and received by that time elapsed. So this, uh, this, this is how my basic radar works. Examples of it include air traffic control ATC. Whereas if I talk about secondary radar, these are the passive kind of radars. They are usually used for friend or foe detection. They do not transmit, right? Uh, here the, uh, what basically happens, it requires an airborne transponder which responds to receptor of pulse. Recept of pulse from ground base antenna by transmitting a return signal. So basically, why I'm saying they don't uh, they do not transmit because they act upon return signal, right? So they are usually uh, used for friend or foe detection. Now, when we classify primary radar, we do have pulse and continuous wave kind of radar. So what is pulse radar? Here, the pulse modulated signal are used for transmission. 
as discussed duplexer is used to uh, use common antenna for transmission and reception true in case of my continuous wave radar it is a type of radar where uh, where a known stable frequency continuous radio energy that is a sine wave or a cos wave is transmitted and then received from a from any reflecting object here the individual can be detected by using doppler effect if the target is moving after identification its speed can also be calculated and its future location can also be calculated right so we're going to study about each one of it in detail uh, next if we classify my continuous wave radar it is of unmodulated kind and modulated kind we know in communication what does unmodulated means that is no modulation no involvement of any carrier frequency right so here the system emits ra uh, electromagnetic radiations all the time and here the conventional uh, con uh, continuous wave radar which is of unmodulated kind they cannot measure the range these are basically used for detection only they are used for detection only and they are not used for range measurement right range or distance no they are not used for range measurement they are just used for detection right whereas if i talk about a uh, modulated kind of radar modulated kind of continuous wave radar here they uh, they are also called as frequency modulated continuous wave uh, continuous wave radar because this is the most famous kind of modulation which is used in cw radar right here the wave after frequency modulation we know what is frequency modulation when frequency of the carrier wave is altered with respect to instantaneous value of the message signal that kind of modulation is called frequency modulation right here it uses frequency modulation as the underlying technology here this increases reliability by providing distance measurement along with speed measurement so it it is used for distance measurement it is used for speed measurement right this kind of radar is often used as a radar altimeter to measure the exact height this is very useful thing during the landing procedure right so it has got its military application as well civil application as well it is also used as early warning radar right wave radar and proximity sensors so these are used as proximity sensors as well right it can be used for speed calculation now let's go back to the classification primary secondary discussed all the definitions have been discussed in today's lecture will focus on pulse radar its operation right pulse radar it is the most common type of radar signal which consists of repetitive train of short rectangular pulses if i use short rectangular pulses as uh, uh, electromagnetic waves and we transmit it in air from my transmitting antenna then that kind of radar communication is called as pulse radar communication we do use rectangular pulses and here important things that has to be calculated is my pulse repetition frequency pulse repetition time pulse width all these things has to be calculated and has to be controlled before transmission here this figure shows a simple representation of a sine wave pulse that might be generated by by the transmitter of a medium range radar which is designed for aircraft detection right so for aircraft detection what do we use here we can say sine wave is used in the figure but this sine wave persists for a duration that it somehow looks like a pulse 
and these repeated waves are again visible in the similar manner after a fixed duration of time that will be the pulse resting time right here the sine wave in the figure represents the variation with time of the output voltage of the transmitter right the period from start of the first pulse to start of the second pulse is called as pulse repetition period right on x axis we are representing time and y axis we are representing the voltage here if we talk about the characteristics of my pulse radar the range accuracy of a simple pulse radar here depends on the width of the pulse that is shorter the pulse the better the accuracy right one pulse i have this which is repeating every second and one pulse which is repeating every one third of second this will have better accuracy right short pulses however require wide bandwidths that's a known uh, uh, truth right hence the receiver and the transmitter uh, the bandwidth requirements increases if you want better accuracy so uh, no good technology comes without any cost so we have to pay the cost of bandwidth if we need better accuracy so for better accuracy in military communication we can go with uh, broader bandwidths a radar with a pulse width of 1 microsecond can measure the range to an accuracy of few tons of meters or better right here the phenomena which is used is doppler frequency and target velocity radar can extract the doppler frequency shift to the echo produced by a moving target by noting how much the frequency of the received signal differs from the frequency of the signal that was transmitted if i transmit frequency of x hertz whereas after striking the target it returns back with x dash hertz if this is an increased frequency then i uh, assume that the target is approaching and if this x dash is however smaller than x i assume that the target is going away right so reading or analyzing the doppler frequency gives me uh, necessary or useful information right since the doppler frequency shift is proportional to radial velocity a radar system that measures such a shift in the frequency can provide the radial velocity of a target so such kind of radar is used to measure the radial velocity of the target which is one of the application of my pulse radar here the doppler shift can also be used to separate moving targets from stationary targets if there is no shift in frequency x was transmitted x was received back then my target is stationary if x was transmitted x dash was received then my target is moving right as simple as that a form of pulse radar that uses doppler frequency shift to eliminate stationary clutter which is called as moving target indication this will study in detail in our coming lectures right let's see how a pulse radar looks like this is the block diagram we do have the antenna here a duplexer is attached this could act as a transmitting antenna or a receiving antenna based on the mode in which duplexer enables it right here one thing when after waveform generation and its amplification first of all wave is generated then it has to be amplified at it, ha it has to be communicated wirelessly right so amplification is required here i have pulse modulator this 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 block differentiates my pulse radar from continuous wave radar i do have a pulse modulator here right at the time of reception as a uh, basic super heterodyne receiver has it has a low noise amplifier mixer if stage then the decoder and the video amplifier here actual detection or demodulation takes place this is the mixer uh, the symbol this is a mixer or i can say it's a product modulator and one of the input is my radio wave which is received another input to it is a locally generated carrier wave right from rf frequency it is lowered down to if frequency then the signal is amplified 
and after IF range, after demodulation, I get the actual baseband signal, which is amplified and output I can have a display unit. which might be presenting me where actually the target is or uh, uh, at what velocity it is approaching or moving away. So this complete part looks somehow like my super heterodyne receiver. Right? This complete part looks like my super heterodyne receiver. And the display unit could be of our choice whether we want to locate the thing whether we want to see the velocity of it so a uh, preferable kind of display unit is used right here the pulse modulator it produces a pulse modulated signal and it is applied to the transmitter it transmits the pulse modulated signal which is a train of repetitive pulses here the duplexer which we use it is a microwave switch which connects the antenna to both transmitter section and the receive section alternatively. You can see here, this duplexer enables the antenna in transmission mode. I can like rewrite this as, this enables the antenna in transmission mode when this part operates and when it receives back the echo. then it enables the receiver mode, right? So duplexer here acts as a switch. Duplexer is a microwave switch, which connects antenna to both transmitter section and the receiver section. Antenna transmits the pulse modulated signal when the duplexer connects the antenna to the transmitter. Similarly, the signal which is received by antenna will be given to low noise RF amplifier. And when the duplexer connects to antenna, to low noise um, RF amplifier at the time of reception, right? What's the role of a LNA, low noise amplifier? It helps in removal of noise. It helps in amplification of the low power signal. Low power signal is amplified with the help of my low noise amplifier. Local oscillator tries to generate the similar phase and frequency, uh, uh, coherent phase frequency carrier wave which was earlier used at transmitter. So it, uh, whereas uh, this frequency is generated locally, why do we call it local oscillator? Because my transmitter is geographically at another place in case of modulation, whereas receiver is at another place, right? Whereas all this reception and generation occurs here in, in the complete radar section, it has got its name local oscillator, right? Yeah, the mixer we know uh, can also be called as product modulator. It produces both the sum and difference of frequencies and the desired frequencies selected using a particular bandpass filter. We can use bandpass filters of preferable uh, frequency. We can tune it to the frequency which is desired. Usually, we tune it to IF frequency and next stage is my IF amplifier. Then IF frequency selected is amplified. And finally, the demodulation occurs. Demodulation and after that, the video signal or the audio signal is amplified and is displayed. For displaying, we usually have CRT cathode ray tube screens. If I talk about few common parameters of pulse radar, then the pulse has to be studied in detail. So this is how my sine wave repeats and this looks like a pulse. So from the start of first pulse to start of second pulse, the time is called as pulse repetition time. Whereas from the end of first pulse to start of first pulse, the time gap is called as resting time when there is no pulse. Whereas for the time duration my pulse exists, it is called as pulse width, right? So from here pulse, pulse width discussed, resting time has been discussed. 
पल्स रिपीटेशन टाइम कैन बी गिवन बाय पल्स विथ प्लस रेस्टिंग टाइम पल्स रिपीटेशन टाइम दिस इज पल्स विथ प्लस रेस्टिंग टाइम पल्स रिपीटेशन फ्रीक्वेंसी इज इनवर्स ऑफ पल्स रिपीटेशन टाइम द लाइक हाउ मेनी साइकिल्स पर हर्ज राइट सो दिस इज इनवर्स वी नो दैट पी टी इज इनवर्स ऑफ पल्स रिपीटेशन फ्रीक्वेंसी पल्स इफ 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 आई मे राइट इट एज राइट आई यूजली वी राइट इट बाय कैपिटल टी राइट पीक पावर द पीक पावर विच इज ट्रांसमिटेड एवरेज पावर इज एवरेज ओवर द पल्स ड्यूरेशन so how peak power and average power are related average power is related to peak power multiplied by pulse uh, width multiplied by pulse repetition time and if i talk about duty cycle how it is related my duty cycle is related to pulse width and pulse repetition frequency as multiplication of it right so these are the related terms that we should know about pulse radar so uh, in uh, coming lectures we can continue from here that's it for today thank you these are the references which i have used